Today, we're gonna to learn how to minimize the amount of bytes that your application sends back to its users, and we're gonna do this via HTML minification. To start out with, HTML minification is essentially just going to minify the amount of HTML that's sent back to your users. So if we jump into the browser and take a look at an existing project's response here, if we go to inspect it, dive into our network, give the page a refresh so that we get a network request, take a look at the response for this request, we wanna go raw, and you can see out of the box, there's a lot of white space here. It's essentially taking the HTML as we wrote it and just sending that back to the user. So we can use HTML minification to get rid of all of this white space, including the additional line breaks that aren't necessarily needed, and then send it back to our users. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do to get started is install the HTML minifier package. So to start, let's go ahead and jump into our terminal here and let's get this installed. So this will be npm i HTML minifier, and then let's go ahead and create a middleware so that we can actually utilize this minifier. So let's do node ace make middleware HTML minifier, and next let's go ahead and register that middleware within our project. So let's jump into our start directory inside of kernel, and let's go ahead and register it as a global middleware. We can always add additional checks inside of the middleware to make sure that it only runs on the routes that it should. So let's go at middleware HTML minifier. Next, let's go ahead and jump inside of that file there. Now, the important thing to note here is that in order to actually alter your response body, you'll need the body to already be set. So there's two different ways that middleware can go. You can have before next, which would be altering, authorizing, or preparing your request. And then you have after, which would be altering your response. So in order to actually minify our response body, we'll need the body to have already been set, meaning we want to alter the response. So all of the code that we'll be doing for this will be after our next call. So let's do const minify equals require HTML minifier and then dot minify. So here we're just grabbing the actual minification method that we can then use after our next call. And so we can get back the minified response body by doing const minified body equals minify. And let's grab the response out of our HTTP context and provide response dot get body to actually get the body contents. So this will be the HTTP HTML markup that we'll be sending back for this response. And then we can provide in some options for the minification. Now for the complete set of options that you have available, definitely check out the documentation. We'll be going over just a few here today. So first and foremost, you can minify any CSS that might be in your markup. So we can set that to true. You can minify JavaScript that might be in your markup. Now this does not work with like Alpine attribute based JavaScript, but it will work with your normal script based JavaScript. We can remove comments from our HTML. So we can set that to true. And if you want to preserve your line breaks, you can do preserve line breaks and set that to true. We'll go ahead and omit that for right now. And you can collapse white space as well. So we'll set that to true. And now that will give us back our minified HTML within our const minified body. So what we need to do with that is alter our actual response body. And we can do that by doing response.send and passing it in our minified body as that HTML. Now we're not done with this yet, but let's go ahead and take a look at what it's doing. So let's give this a save, jump back into our application. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this to persist log so that we still have our original request there. And I'm gonna go ahead and give the page a refresh. And now we have our new request right here. You'll notice that the page still looks the same. Nothing changed there, but we can click on this, take a look at the raw response, and you'll see everything is now down to just one line. So everything is minified. So we know it's working a-okay. The downside here is if you have post requests or anything like that, this is still going to try to run. So for example, if we try to submit one of our posts here, it's going to send it off and it's going to run for this post request here as well, even though it doesn't need a response body. And that's because we set it up as a global middleware. So what we want to do is limit this to just the get requests that have HTML. And we can do this by first checking the method. So for that, we'll want our request out of our HTTP context. And then we'll do const method equals request dot method. And that is a method in itself. So you need to call that as a function. And then we want to get the requests expected response type. So we can do that via const accepts equals request dot accepts. And we just want to get them all back. So we'll provide an empty array there and we will default to an array should it not be provided at all. And then we'll tell TypeScript this is a string array. And then if you're providing any XML on your site, you can do const is XML here and then do whatever verification is needed to verify whether or not the request is an XML on your site. So this might be something like request.url.ends dot dot with dot XML or something of the sort. And now it's just time to use these values to check whether or not we want our HTML to be minified for this particular request. So first we can do if method does not equal get, since in most cases we won't need to run it for anything that's not a get request or not accepts dot includes text slash HTML. So if the request does not accept HTML as a response, then we don't 
don't want to minify the body since HTML is not expected back. And then last we can do or is XML and any additional checks that you might need to do. And once we have this if statement, if any of these become truthy, we just run a return. So next already ran, so we're clear to just go ahead and return out of this middleware at any point in time that we deem fit. And by returning there, our minification will never happen and our response will never be altered. So we can give that a save, jump back into our browser and verify that it's still working for our new request. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear out all of our existing ones, give the page a refresh. Let's take a look at the raw response here and you can see it's still minified. And then we can jump back into our project and add in an additional console log just to verify that our if statement here is working. So we can do console.log should not minify there. And then we can do console.log will minify there to check whether or not our HTML will be minified. We can open up our terminal here so we can keep an eye on that. Give the page another refresh there. You can see will minifies down there in the console log. We can send off a put request and you can see should not minify is being picked up by that put request. But then we also redirect back. So that's what the additional will minify there is for. So we can actually take a look at that response and you can see that HTML is indeed minified. So everything does seem to be working there. So there's a quick look at how you can go about minifying the HTML for your get request responses, saving not only you payload amounts that you need to send, but your users data as well. If you enjoyed or learned something new in this lesson, please consider hitting the like button down below and subscribing for future lessons just like this one. We focus heavily on Adonis.js here, so please consider sticking around and learning more about Adonis.js. And if you're interested in learning Adonis.js, check out our Let's Learn Adonis.js series where we start from scratch. So thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.